Danish software company Consolidator published a report for the th fourth and final quarter of 2022. And with me here in the digital studio, I have invited its CEO, it's Klaus Findrup Gro. Welcome. Thank you very much. As uh, usual, you prepared a presentation for today. So without further ado, I'll give you the word. Thank you very much. And, uh, and thank you for, for being here. Yes, I'm delighted to, to present our Q4 2022 and our uh, main numbers from, uh, from the annual uh, report. Uh, I've made a, a very short uh, agenda, so, uh, so let us uh, get started uh, immediately. Firstly, Consolidator, we are a SaaS company having a financial consolidation tool which we provide to CFO and auditors around the world. And uh, at the end of uh, 2022, we had uh, 259 customers in uh, 21 uh, countries. Our main market is uh, Denmark and Sweden, but uh, as you can see, we are all over Europe and also in Asia and in North America and actually also have customers in, uh, in Africa. A little bit about uh, what have happened in Q4 since, uh, since uh, last time uh, is that uh, we have a, a sales team for Denmark and Benelux, which are operating well and uh, they are in place. And uh, we, have, we grow uh, year on year uh, with 21% in the, the, the Danish and the Benelux uh, market. Sweden is uh, particularly strong and has been strong for the entire uh, 2022. And uh, they showed a, a growth of 61% growth in, uh, in last year. Um, due to reasons that I will also come into, we have closed the office in, in Stockholm and have uh, uh, replaced the, the Swedish team with a, a Swedish team uh, based in, uh, in Copenhagen. So still coverage uh, uh, Sweden and uh, growing fast on Sweden, but now from, uh, from Copenhagen. And then we have also closed the, the office in, in England and uh, moved the, the sales teams from England to, uh, to Copenhagen. So now we have our entire sales and marketing team uh, in, uh, in our office, headquarter office here in, uh, in Copenhagen and England and the rest of the world that grew with the 13% last year. In general, uh, 2022 has been a, a year where we have kind of made a turnaround from being a company with high growth and also high cash burn to a company that is now focusing on profitable growth. So we have reduced the cost uh, tremendously and has uh, moved from 32 uh, staff to now being 24 uh, uh, people in, in total. So that has reduced the cost base with more than uh, 30%. The annual report for 2022 and some uh, numbers from uh, Q4. Um, starting with, uh, with the annual report, we, uh, we recognized an, uh, a turnover, a revenue of 16.7 million Danish kroner, which grew with uh, 3.7 million compared to uh, 2021. Uh, equaling a, a growth of uh, 29%. Uh, Our EBIT uh, before share-based uh, share payment was negative by 19.7 uh, million uh, Danish kroner, which is an improvement of 3.3 uh, compared to uh, the year uh, before. We have a negative equity of 11.4 uh, million uh, Danish kroner, uh, and uh, that is, uh, of course, uh, due to the, the, the deficit we had on the PL. Um, and um, yeah, I'll, I'll get a little bit more into that, what uh, we expect to, to, to do with that. There are some uh, uncertainties, of course, around uh, our, the company because of uh, the negative equity. And that is that uh, this year we need to raise 5 million in, in operating cash. And then we need we have a loan which is, uh, has to be refinanced before the, the 1st uh, September of uh, 25 million Danish kroner. Obviously, we are in a process of, uh, of uh, getting both things solved and are positive in, in that regard. And uh, the plan that is that uh, we want to raise 15 million Danish kroner in equity, uh, where we need the 5 million uh, to, uh, to, the, to, uh, to the working capital to, to run the operation. And then we want to reduce uh, the debt we have with the 10 million and then get a, a new loan of, uh, of uh, 15 million Danish kroner, which we can then pay back uh, through our operating profit. So, so that is, uh, it, it is in uh, progress uh, right now, and of course has to be uh, in place before the September 1st, which we also are positive about that we can, that we can manage. And after, if we raise these 15 million in equity and get the loan refinanced to a 15 million Danish kroner loan, then we are profitable, uh, then we can run the operation with our own, uh, with our own cash. 
Uh, regarding uh, some uh, some of our SaaS metrics, being a SaaS uh, company, we have a lot of uh, SaaS metrics, and uh, there are different uh, SaaS metrics. I will not cover all of them here, but uh, in general, I mean, our AR uh, ended at 17.6 million, which is an increase of 4 million and 29% uh, compared to the, the year before. Uh, unfortunately, our churn, uh, one of the important uh, metrics also increased uh, actually a lot from 4 to uh, to 10 percent or 4.1 to 10.8 percent. The the reason why it uh, increased so much was because of uh, onboarding churn. Unfortunately, we had a lot of customers that came in and then during the onboarding process, they decided to uh, to leave us uh, again and terminate the, the contract. Obviously, we have set all kind of uh, things uh, in place in order to to improve the the churn and we do believe that we uh, during next year or the year after we'll get back to our learn low churn uh, around um, uh, around five percent our guidance for 2023 is a uh, eight to ten percent uh, churn and then the year after being back to uh, to five percent or, or lower a little bit about the the, the highlights from a, from a pnl perspective in q4 uh, we had a subscription fee uh, at uh, 3.9 million uh, Danish kroner, which was up by 41% compared to Q4 uh, 2021. Um, and our EBIT uh, has uh, moved from a 6 million in deficit in Q4 2021 to a deficit of 4.5 million in, uh, in Q4 2022. So an improvement of uh, 25%. Uh, percent. Um, Yes, uh, a little bit about uh, the the outlook for for the for the ongoing uh, years. Uh, we will continue to be a growth uh, company. I mean, our potential in the world is uh, huge. So Denmark and Sweden is our fastest growing market, but there is also potential for our product in the in the entire world. Uh, so so that of course we will run after and see how, how big a market share we can get of that. But the time has changed and now it's profitability it's all about. So we have adjusted the the cost from these 32 staff uh, the year before to 24 in order to reduce the cost base. So we are now focusing on being profitable, which we uh, aim to be in uh, 2022, uh, excuse me, 2024. But of course, we will improve our EBIT uh, a lot uh, during this year. Now, when we have 24 uh, people, that's uh, more or less uh, cost a million Danish kroner per employee. So we will have an EBIT cost of 25 million Danish kroner this year. And as our revenue will, will be between 20 and 22, then uh, we will be very close to, uh, to break even at the, the end of the year. And that's our main uh, focus for, for 2023. That's also one of the reasons why the cost in 2022 has been so high, because we have had a lot of uh, cost of uh, reducing the, the staff and also closing the office in, in Stockholm and in England, which has, of course, generated some one-time cost, which are over for 2023. Yes, so uh, in general, still uh, a growth uh, case from 16.7 uh, in 2022 to 20 to 22 in, uh, in 23. And uh, with the reduced uh, cost base, then uh, we believe that we are in a much better position than we were a year ago. That was it. Thank you for, for the presentation. Thank you, Klaus. Uh, you, it was a great summary of the year, but uh, it's time to shift our focus a little bit to the quarter in specific. Uh, you reported a revenue of about uh, 4.5 million Danish crowns and all in all a loss of 5.7, which is uh, 1 million more than in Q3. Are you satisfied with the quarter? Yeah, uh, obviously it's difficult to be satisfied with such a big loss, but uh with the circumstances and the circumstances for us were that we reduced the number of staff and we replaced the, for example, the Swedish sales team with a sales team in a, in Denmark. So there was a transition period where we, we sold maybe a little bit less than what we had hoped for uh, at the expense of reducing uh, the cost. So, uh, so, uh, but so 2022 and also Q4 was a quarter and a year where we kind of prepare for being profitable. So under those circumstances, uh, we are satisfied. We gained 16 customers in Q4, which we believe under the circumstances with the new sales team uh, was uh, was okay. So yes, we are under the circumstances satisfied. 
with Q4. Great to hear. But but there was, there was, there was something I picked up on in the uh, presentation, and that was the figure you gave in uh, in relations to the uh, the employees that you uh, terminated. I was curious about uh, some of the details uh, regarding specifically their salary. Is it a fixed income, or do, or, uh, do they work on provisional basis? Both. Uh, I mean, all the sales rep, they have a fixed uh, salary. And then on top of that, they have a provision of how much uh, AR they, they, they generate. Mm. So, um, yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about the sales metrics then. The ARR growing at uh, 17 million, last I checked, Danish crowns. Uh, but I wanted to specifically talk about the churn because you raised it yourself. It is a grow. It is a little bit of a concerning number and it is high, landing at 10.8%. Uh, we talked about the challenges before, and you've mentioned it's during the onboarding process. Uh, but how much of this churn is due to the onboarding process? Is there any churn outside the onboarding process? Yes, there is. I mean, around 70% 70, 70 of uh, the 10% is uh, onboarding churn. So without onboarding churn, we are below 5%. We are at 3 or 4% uh, churn, not at zero uh, churn. There will always be some kind of churn because companies can go bankrupt, they can be bought by other companies so they don't need uh, consolidation tools and, and stuff like that. So, uh, so And they can also have companies that reduce the number of subsidiaries so they suddenly don't have a, a need for, for software for consolidation. So you will, you will never, and our goal has never been to have a zero uh, churn, but, um, but the onboarding churn has been a pain for us. And uh, of course, we are doing everything we can to reduce uh, the onboarding churn, and it will improve because we know the reason why uh, the, the, they churn during the onboarding process. So, so that of course we have uh, we have rectified. So we will see a lower onboarding churn in the future, and we will also then see a, a lower churn coming back to the to the to the previous level around the five percent. Hmm. But uh, have you do you expect it to already have peaked? Can we expect a lower churn already in Q1? Yeah, you can, uh, no doubt. Uh, I mean, it, 2022 was a, a, a very strange uh, year in, 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 in many regards. One of the reasons for the high onboarding churn was also that we got a lot of new customers during 2021. And when you reduce staff, then there's less uh, people to do the onboarding. So suddenly our onboarding team, they have much higher number of onboarding. So obviously they could pay less attention to some of the, the new customers. And that was one of the reasons and that has been rectified. So now the onboarding team, they have, you can say, a more correct number of onboardings uh, at, at, at each uh, time. Uh, so the customer gets the attention that, uh, that they need. So that has been solved. Uh, so yes, we, we have peaked and you will see the churn uh, be reduced from, uh, from here onwards. Well, that's great to hear. And we'll leave Sharon soon in a moment. But I just wanted to ask one specific thing, uh, because I saw in the report that you write a less standard, uh, standardized uh, onboarding combined with the effects of a decision to try self onboarding have resulted in an increase of onboarding churn. Uh, why do you think people, uh, your customers want to self onboard? And what does that mean? Self onboarding meaning that uh, we had an ambition of being what we call a plug and play product. So you can just uh, uh, go in and try us uh, and then uh, onboard yourself. Uh, but we found out that actually during an onboarding, it's not only about learning consolidate and learning the software. There's also an education element in it. We are expert in on, we are experting in consolidation and financial consolidation. So we also educate our customers in how does a correct consolidated cash flow statement look like, for example. So, uh, so we don't believe that uh, uh, self onboarding is the answer. I mean, customers, they actually prefer to, uh, to be educating during the onboarding process. So that was one of the reasons why we had this high churn because we, we let the customers do it by themselves. And uh, that was not uh, actually what, uh, what they wanted. So, and we of course did it because then it would be cheaper for them to onboard because then if you don't have to pay for a consultant, then uh, we can reduce the onboarding cost. But we saw that that was not a success. Our customers, they want to pay a little bit and get educated. Well, let's talk about the customers that you've uh, added to your uh, to your product this uh, this uh, this quarter. 16 in total. Tell us more about them. What are the common characteristics? The common characteristic is that uh, they're broken down to, I think we got uh, nine customers in Sweden and four in England. And uh, that was actually 
nine in Sweden. I mean, that's again show us. I mean, Sweden is a extremely strong market for us. I mean, they have really adopted consolidator well. Uh, the CFOs and auditors in Sweden, they like us. Uh, and of course, we are extremely happy uh, about that. So, so that was uh, one uh, characteristic. Another characteristic, that was actually in England, that uh, we got four customers. That's actually the highest uh, in a quarter for, for us. And that's, uh, you could say, funny in a, in a quarter where we just uh, laid off our, our country manager for England and, and, and moved uh, the sales team back to, uh, to Copenhagen. Uh, but of course, that was because of the, the effort that the, the previous uh, country manager has done, all the PR and the marketing. So now we can see that the consolidator does have a huge potential in England. Uh, so, so that was uh, also uh, one of the characteristics for, for Q4. Hmm. Huge potential both in Eng- England and in Sweden. And these markets have something in common, and that is that you shut down the offices here uh, when it comes to the sale organization and reorganizing it. But I'm wondering then if there is such high potential in both England and Sweden. Uh, in the long term, would it be possible that you will open up operations locally? Yes, it, it is, but I don't think we will do it. Uh, we decided both for the English and the Swedish office before Corona. And before Corona, we have to uh, visit our customers uh, physically. Uh, but after Corona, where everyone has accepted Teams, uh, then uh, we don't need to physically to, to travel to customers. And if you don't need to travel physically to customers, then it's better. Synergy is both cost-wise, but also uh, having the synergy of being with your colleagues. So I actually believe that uh, in the future, our European team uh, will be from uh, from from uh, from Copenhagen. Hopefully, once in the future, we will have an office in maybe in US and in Asia because of the time differences. But I don't think that uh, we need an office in neither England nor in, uh, in in Stockholm. I think we can cover everything from uh, from Denmark. And also because here in Copenhagen, we are so close to Sweden. So our Swedish team, they're living in Malmö and, uh, and, and traveling to the office here in Copenhagen or work from home. So we do have Swedish people for the Swedish uh, market, which I think we need. And the same will go for for UK that we can hire a British uh, person for for the British market, but placed in in Copenhagen. So I think that will be the future for for many SaaS uh, companies. Hmm. Talk to us more about the Nordic market, specifically the Norwegian market, because we talked about it in our last uh, last interview in Q3. But I didn't see any mention of it in the report. How was that developed? Yeah, it's not uh, not positive, unfortunately, because of the cost uh, reduction. So uh, we actually uh, started up in Norway and had our sales uh, had a sales team for Norway, but we actually decided to to close it down again and uh, having uh, Norway covered by the the Swedish uh, sales rep. So we actually started up and closed it down uh, very fast again. And the reason why that's because of this extremely focus on profit, and we want to be profit in uh, in 2023 or the end of 2023. And uh, we didn't believe that we could uh, have Norway as a standalone team profitable in 2023. Um, so the potential in Norway is, is huge, uh, but uh, we cannot be profitable in that market within uh, 12 months. So that's the reason why we, we decided to put it on pause, um, um, unfortunately, because the potential is, uh, is definitely there. Hmm. Then I have one final question, and it uh, it is related to your negative equity, which is a problem that you've had for quite a while now. Uh, in the report, I noticed that in October, directors and managers held an extraordinary uh, general meeting to address these issues. Could you tell us a little bit on uh, what happened during this meeting? What was decided? Yeah, in general, I mean, of course, we have negative equity. I mean, we only have one creditor, and that is uh, the the loan. Uh, so so uh, so. So you can say t- to that extent we are we are in control, uh, but what was uh, discussed and decided was that we raised a little bit of capital uh, during that the meeting three million Danish kroner, and uh, our effort is of course on uh, recovering the equity, and that is the reason why we're looking for 15 million Danish kroner as an investment because if when we we get that then we both will have positive equity, we will have enough cash to run the business towards profitability. And we can reduce the loan to 15 million Danish kroner, which we can pay back uh, through our uh, uh, operation. So if when we get these uh, 15 million Danish kroner, then uh, we will be uh, safe and sound all the way around. Uh, so that was uh, what was uh, discussed and, uh, and decided that we are looking for those uh, 15 million. Mm-hmm. And of course, having a lot of investment uh, investor meetings uh, at, the, at the moment. 
three million Danish crowns were raised, you say, but uh, how, how was this money raised? Who was behind the money? Full friends and family. Hmm. So, uh, so it was a, it was a direct issues of, of uh, investors that uh, we have been in contact with for for, for years, and uh, they uh, yeah, and then they agree on to to raising these uh, these three million. Klaus Finderup Gro, CEO of Consolidator. Thank you very much for being here and answering my questions. Thank you very much to you.